After taking a break in 2020, I returned to the GMTK Game Jam this year. A Game Jam is an exercise in game development where people get 48 hours to come up with a game that fits a certain theme. This year it was joined together. They can work on their own or in teams and year after year GMTK breaks its former record of participants. Two years ago it was 2591 games, which was incredible at the time, well this year we had 5820 entries. While I still do not take part in the game making process myself, I do enjoy playing through the submissions. I do this while streaming so I can talk to the developers, learn a bit more about the process they went through and give constructive feedback. 2019 I managed to play about 70 games and afterwards put together a video of my favorite games, sorted by genre. This year I broke my personal record and played 86 games. 20 of them were so good that I want to talk a bit about them in this video. Since I played only 1.5% of the games submitted, this can obviously not be a definitive ranking, but you probably figured that out already. It's just all those games that really convinced me with their concept, execution, game design or humor, and I want to spread the word about them and this beautiful game jam that allowed me once more to talk to developers and meet incredible people along the way. So I will now head into the ranking of the games that I think need some praise. The list starts off with Circuit Repair by Odd Oliver. The game does not look like much and somehow reminded me of old school Amiga games, but the basic concept is pretty convincing. You steer a robot through mazes and need to get LEDs to light up by pushing blocks to close circuits. What makes this game stand out are two things, the level design and the welding mechanic. There are only a handful of levels as of now, but you can see where this could be going in a full release. The game makes you explore the level and figure out the correct order in which you move through it, activate switches and interact with the boxes. And then you can attach boxes to your tiny robot, which also serves as an additional box. Because you can't unweld it, you need to plan ahead, to not get stuck and attach the box on the correct side. Right now the game lacks a bit of polish and first and foremost more levels, so I hope the game will see future releases with more mechanics. Brain Link by the Mosterds uses a concept I have seen more than once during this and the 2019 gen. You control different characters at the same time and need to navigate carefully. In this case you get two screens each with a playable figure that move simultaneously through differently set up mazes. Stepping on colored switches opens corresponding gates on both screens and so you have to figure out a path to reach a switch without steering the other character into lava or blocking it off from advancing. Can be confusing at times, but the core concept works fine and is spread out over astonishingly many levels for a 48 hour jam. And when I kind of got a grasp on the game, it suddenly exploded by serving me four screens at the same time. And this is where my brain shut off. The game needs more balance, but it could become a very good puzzler. Lorenzo's Looting by Captain Sub won me over with pairing a gold collecting goblin with ATMs. But even beyond this wonderful silliness it offers a strong concept. Collecting gold makes your goblin slow and heavy which affects its jumping height so you cannot carry it all at once. What you need to do is deposit it in one of the ATMs in the level. And so you can make your way through the obstacle course with only a little gold and then return to get the rest of it. This is funny and it works as a mechanic because you need to figure out a working route through the level and then execute it without being beheaded or something like that. It is simple but it works and it was just enjoyable. I think it should add a mechanic where you can transfer gold from one ATM to another. Apart From Me by Tyrant Nomad is extremely short, offers no challenge at all and has little to no mechanics. But it made me laugh so hard and was so well set up that I really wanted this to be an actual game. It starts when reading the instructions that set up the premise of the game. You are at work and an alarm goes off so you need to investigate. The game throws everything you set your mind to out of the window in a few seconds and has so many nice touches like the door to your workplace that is so small that you need to duck. And I think you need to experience this one for yourself, but I want an elaborate comedy metroidvania spawning from this. Forest of the Magic Lamp by Seymour was the first game I played when I had to play through the 25 randomly selected games in my queue to be able to raid any game. It was a very strong start for me into the jam. You control two siblings at the same time, but independently from each other, who carry a lamp through the dark of the night trying to reach home. Each of them can drop and pick up the lamp, but none of them is allowed to ever leave the light or you will have to start over from a checkpoint. 
Both kits have different abilities, one can crouch, one can jump higher, so you need to carefully navigate both at the same time, which works surprisingly well. The game is intuitive and almost never frustrating or janky, figuring out what to do is generally pretty easy but enjoyable, and the game looks and sounds beautiful. This is one of those games I can picture as a full game with many more mechanics and all kinds of challenges to overcome. You could utilize other light sources, temporary protection from the dark, teleporters and much more. They Must by Limo Feu is another example of controlling different objects at the same time. Making the movement of characters, what is joined together, seems to be one of the most used mechanics to fit the theme. The twist in this game is that there are different purposes for all the objects. This is where the name of the game comes into play. Some must die, some must live, some must be joined together. And then the game throws different level elements at you, like blocks that appear once a single object moves over them, so they can be both used to block off objects that should be kept safe or that can create a fail state by blocking off those that should proceed. It's pretty fine-tuned and the many levels that have already been created show the design talent of the developer. The game is already pretty fleshed out and can easily be nudged into a full release. A Rickshaw's Radical Rickshaw by Skull Eleven Knight. Skull Knight, I guess. Yeah, Skull Knight. That was the funniest game I played during the jam. I laughed throughout the experience. It's essentially Crazy Taxi. It looks like it and you also need to bring passengers to marked spots on the map in a very tight time limit. What makes it so genius is that no one asks you to pick them up or bring them to their designation and of course you can join them together so you can pick up as many passengers as you want at the same time before reaching the drop-off zone. This is not only funny but actually an interesting twist on the Crazy Taxi formula. And because it is Crazy Taxi, it is fun to control, but more than that you can wreak havoc by running through more or less anything. And the best thing are the voice lines uttered by the involuntary passengers. And the music completes this package of mad fun straight from the 90s. Bungie Butts by Satchel and Steve is a feel-good game, where you need to join together Pikmin-like seeds and lead them into a hole in the earth, presumably for them to bloom. It's a simple game, but it uses its mechanics well, and it's just so wholesome with its catchy music and expressive art. You can utilize your seeds to reach other seeds or switches, and this one could be expanded upon, as so far it is not as impressive in terms of level design, but you can easily see where this could be going. Grab and Go by Ahmed Kalak looks really cheap, but I had so much fun with it and it was so smooth that it made this list. It starts hilariously with the evil moon stealing your character's limbs, so you need to get those limbs back by rolling through the world and sticking to surfaces. It's a simple physics-based game, but it's fun to play and has great humor, so that's enough for me to justify this spot in my ranking. Special Spatial Task Force by Bonevold is a shoot 'em up a shmup, and I am really not a fan of shmups. Most of them just seem to have you memorize insane bullet patterns and need a reaction time I just don't seem to have. And they all feel a bit samey to me. This game, however, is different because it utilized the jam's theme so well and is just so much fun to play. Features a collection of many differently colored chips and each ship has its own distinct weapon. What makes this game work so well is that they are not only controlled with the same movement inputs joined together, but they are all firing automatically. The more ships you got in your fleet, the bigger your destructive energy, but it gets more and more difficult to protect them from incoming bullets and enemies at the same time. So you constantly gain and lose ships and only have to worry about losing your last ship. And what works so well about that is the distinct weapons, because you always need to adjust your playstyle depending on what weapons you currently fire. This made the game never get boring and I was amazed with how many weapon types were there. You can even get the same ship more than once, which adds to the variety. I enjoyed my time with this game so much and I can't think of any other shmup that plays like this. Threatbound by Pinnell instantly captivated me with its visuals. When a game jam game looks like this, you are easily tricked into believing it's an incredible entry. But Threatbound delivered, kind of. You play as some kind of a magician who uses yarn to bind together different objects and even himself to other objects. This way you can push a box and the magically connected platform will move up or down or left and right depending on the axis you connected. The game won me over when it introduced the mechanic of binding stuff to moving objects like a creature which instantly reminded me of Baba is You. 
and it opens up a lot of possibilities. This version was held back by being a little intuitive in how you connect stuff and how directions work, but the concept alone was enough to make this list. Superposition by Red Shirt Gaming is yet another game with two screens that are controlled at the same time. This one is rather stylish and quite addictive, yet also a bit tedious to control in the later levels. In this game, both characters need to reach the goal at the same time, and because of the different layout of the screen, you need to run into walls with one character to change the relative position of the other one. It works well and has you come closer to the solution with every attempt trying out different strategies, and reaching the goal is all the more satisfying. AbraClick Trial Version by Just CAMH is another game that made me laugh, but this one was also a decent action puzzler. The humor shines through every aspect of the game. The goal at each level is essentially to be able to click on a Microsoft Windows dialog window, but because your mouse is joined together with other objects, it can be tricky to reach them. What starts as pure silly fun soon goes on to present you with pretty varied challenges, including a level that resembles a pinball course or a breakout level. Each level surprised me from start to finish and it was a pretty wholesome experience. I don't see this as a full release, but for the sake of a game jam, it was a very welcome addition. And you can tell that the developer is able to come up with good level design, so I would be interested in what else they are doing. Maze of the Mini Tower by Zachary Richmond and others gained tons of ratings and recognition during the jam and for a good reason. It's a charming, clever puzzle game that anyone can instantly comprehend and have a lot of fun with from the get-go. The Minotaur is a cute creature that navigates through a maze of grids that can be rearranged at certain spots to reach the goal. There's not much more to say about it except that it has a working difficulty progression and that the levels are crafted in a way that you'd think they have been playtested a lot. So. Coming up with this in 48 hours is extraordinary. Whale Eater by Moraguma was easily the most impressive game I played in terms of polish and being fully realized. It blew me away with its visuals and the whole design and I cannot believe this was made in 48 hours. You control a robot that can switch between two tools, a grappling hook and a harpoon. The hook can attach to certain surfaces and will then propel the robot there which will result in the screen turning accordingly. The animation of this, the feedback and the impact of hitting a floor is so satisfying and feels really good. But the game is not all looks and style, it's a well thought out puzzle platformer that made my brain go mad. I don't think I was at the height of my brain capacity when I tried this game during the voting period, but I came back to play it once more and it was still tough to figure out what to do, but in a positive way. The environmental puzzles are clever and multi-layered, the game has atmosphere and charm and is just brilliant. I can see other people putting this one at their top spot and some of the games on the higher ranks are less elaborate, but while I was deeply impressed with it, I didn't have as much fun as with some others, which may be a result of the difficulty. But if I could pick one game that needs a full release, it has to be this one. Super, super impressive. Joining Forces by Ian Gogo is another pretty fleshed out game for a 48 hour game. You control three characters that all have unique elemental abilities, electricity, fire and ice. Each can pass through gates of their own color, but not the others. And just like in the great puzzle game she remembered caterpillars, you can merge two characters to form a new color and a new ability, water, plant and dynamite. You need to collect corresponding elemental orbs with the correct character to activate the exit. So you always need to find a way to get the correct character through a maze, activate switches or machines and open doors. And even though there is a bit too much backtracking involved, the general layout of the levels is very good and you never need to resort to trial and error. There are already many levels and this is another example of a game that needs an expanded release. Sparkling by Sir Ponch has you control two very different characters independently at the same time a spark of energy and a robot. But they are not all that independent since you can only control the robot when the spark is in close proximity. However, sometimes the spark needs to activate switches far away from the robot to activate moving platforms or open doors. When someone would have presented me with this idea, I would have said it's way too hectic and confusing, but they really pulled it off. Since you control the spark with the mouse, you can go through fast actions in quick succession. And it's not easy by any means, but it felt great whenever I made it through the challenge and never felt unfair. All the levels are well designed and the art and visuals are the icing on the cake. 
yet another game I want to be further developed. Side by Size by Zack E was the last game I played during the voting period. It was way past midnight and the heat was killing me when the developer joined my stream and I decided to still give it a go. And by doing that I had to kick out one game from my top 20 because it was such a high note to end my streaming sessions on. The concept in itself is really clever. You control a square that can have a total of 4 HP. And the main mechanic, whenever you gain or lose HP, other objects grow or shrink in size, revealing the exit or making way for you to progress. However, you can block their growing by positioning yourself next to them. And later on you will get a device that lets you activate or deactivate the other objects from shrinking or growing, which makes the game so much more interesting. The basic concept opens up endless possibilities and many are already realized in the levels of the jam version. This game impressed me with balancing its difficulty so that it's never too easy, never too hard. It was a joy from the first to the final level because this game understands how you teach mechanics through level design and I love that. Full release, please. When I played Slimebound by CHFM I was sure I had this year's winner. It's another puzzle game. In this one you switch between colored blobs and move them across a tile-based screen. Whenever you move a blob, all the crabs of the same color move as well. Come to think of it, I wouldn't be surprised if Mark Brown was inspired by Baba Is You when finding this year's theme and I played a lot of games that seem to reflect that. The genius of this game comes from the blobs' different conditions. Green blobs leave traces of venom or something that will hurt other blobs that pass there, Blue blobs will slide with each movement until they hit a wall and red blobs can push the other blobs without them having their abilities. So the blue blobs won't slide and the green blobs won't spit venom. Figuring out each level was so rewarding and fun and I would instantly buy this game if it were released in a post-jam version. High recommendation and I just knew it would not get any better this year until one game got added to my stream's queue. And that game was Octopuzzler by two foam boards. It blew me away. The more I understood about this game, the more I was amazed by it. It combines everything I love about Game Jam games. It's innovative, charming, it uses its own mechanic to prove its potential, took the theme and realized it in an unsuspected but genius way. And last but not least, it was so funny. I can't comprehend how the developers came up with the story for this game, but the fact that they did made me instantly believe that these are great people I would love to hang out with. So you want to make a puzzle game where you have a limited amount of buttons for the actions your character can perform. So you join different actions together on the same button. So far so interesting. But then you want a story for that and your initial idea is that an octopus invaded your computer and sprayed ink on your files threatening to delete everything. So to save your stuff you need to poke the octopus's three eyes and it kindly lets you do that because why not and poking these eyes will somehow result in you saving your stuff by having a square move through grids. <laughs> I just love stuff like that. The art works with this premise and creates a unique UI so you get a tile based maze and need to figure out a way to use limited buttons by chaining commands that will be executed in the order of how you chain them. And you cannot unchain them, but you can later add commands to already designated commands. It's not easy to describe how it works exactly, but when I understood the mechanics it was like an epiphany. And then I saw what they had created, a very unique way to play a puzzle game that makes you think in chains and patterns and the level design supported this idea so well. The levels are carefully designed so that you understand how it works and never frustrating, you are never overpowered and when I figured out a level it felt so good. It was also a highlight on my stream with the viewers being engaged and also surprised. This game, man, wow. Make more and keep your mad approach to story and presentation. Everything about this game was incredible. And that's it. I played 20 games that made me laugh and think and I really cannot believe that it was just from a more or less random selection of 86 games out of 5820. Just how many innovative and great ideas are out there? How many talented developers who pursue their vision and live out their creativity collaboratively or on their own? I want to thank the community so much for being 
helpful, curious, friendly and creative. I had a great time with this jam, working out the mechanics of the games, failing and having a laugh with you people during my streams and I can't wait for 2022 to return to this wholesome experience. Keep working on your games and please stay in touch with each other. And maybe subscribe to this channel if you understand any German. You can also check out my favorite games from 2019's jam and find the link in the description. So see you next year or maybe in between jams. Until then, enjoy your beautiful day.